The region of what is called Hong Kong today was first occupied by humans 6,000 years ago, bringing with them the knowledge of rice cultivation. In 214 BCE, the Qin Dynasty incorporated the Hong Kong area into China for the first time. In 1513, the earliest European visitor was a Portuguese explorer named Jorge Alvarez. Portuguese merchants established a trading post called Tamao in Hong Kong waters and began regular trade with southern China. In 1841, China ceded the island to the British after the First Opium War. Britain's new colony flourished as an east-west trading center. On July 1, 1898, Britain was granted an additional 99 years of rule over the Hong Kong colony under the Second Convention of Peking. Hong Kong was occupied by the Japanese forces from 1941 to 1944 during World War II, but remained in British hands throughout the various Chinese political upheavals of the 20th century. Hong Kong has provided a safe haven for refugees escaping communism from China and Vietnam since 1949. This will earn the anger of Red China for many years to come. Originally a sparsely populated area of farming and fishing villages, the territory has become one of the world's most significant financial centers and commercial ports due to its democratic political system. Hong Kong has a major capitalist service economy characterized by low taxation and free trade. Its currency, the Hong Kong dollar, is the eighth most traded currency in the world. Hong Kong is the world's 10th largest exporter and 9th largest importer, and home to the second highest number of billionaires of any city in the world. Hong Kong was transferred back to China in 1997 at the end of British rule as a special administrative region. China pledged Hong Kong would maintain separate governing and economic systems from mainland China under a principle of one country, two systems. Under this principle, Hong Kong would continue operating in a capitalist economy and residents would continue to have rights to speech, press, assembly, and religious belief, at least until 2047. However, around 2012, Red China began to insert its power to subjugate Hong Kong by only allowing candidates approved by Beijing to be elected by Hong Kong citizens. Hong Kong people began to launch protests demanding true universal suffrage. The Umbrella Movement was a political movement that emerged during the Hong Kong democracy protest of 2014. The movement consisted of tens of thousands of people who participated in the 79-day occupation of the city that began on September 26, 2014, demanding more transparent elections. Its name arose from the use of umbrellas as a tool for passive resistance to the Hong Kong police's use of pepper spray. Since the start of the 2014 protests, its activists have been harassed, prosecuted, and jailed for their participation in acts of protest. After being named by People's Daily, newspaper under communist regime several times, I will probably be the prime target of the new law. But what makes me fear is not my potential imprisonment, but the gloomy fact that the new law will be the threat over the city's future and not only my personal life.
suspect will be subject to indefined detention without trial in special facilities with unknown location. Once the law is implemented, I and the city's freedom lovers will probably be subject to secret trial, torture in prison, and television confession. The ongoing protests in Hong Kong from 2019 to 2020 were triggered by the Hong Kong government's introduction of the extradition bill. The bill would have allowed extradition to jurisdictions including mainland China and Taiwan. This led to concerns that Hong Kong residents and visitors would be exposed to China's arbitrary judicial system, thereby undermining Hong Kong's autonomy and infringing upon civil liberties. More than the citizens of Hong Kong, the extradition law extends its extraterritorial jurisdiction over people who are not residents of Hong Kong, meaning any person on Earth could technically face prosecution according to the law. This set off a chain of protest actions. As the protests progressed, Hong Kong's chief executive, Carrie Lam, withdrew the bill on September 4th, 2019, but refused to concede the other four demands. Exactly one month later, she invoked the emergency powers to implement an anti-mask law. As the current situation has clearly given rise to a state of serious public danger, the chief executive in council decided to invoke the power under the emergency regulations ordinance and make a new regulation in the name of prohibition on face covering, which is essentially an anti-mask law. To counterproductive effect, Confrontations escalated and intensified. Police brutality and misconduct allegations increased, while some protesters resorted to using petrol bombs and vandalizing pro-Beijing establishments and symbols representing the government.